Uh, yeah. So welcome back, everyone, uh, to the second day. Uh, and we're starting today with uh, the keynote talk. So it's my, my pleasure to introduce the first keynote of FSE 2023, uh, which is given by Siwei Sun. Uh, so Siwei is a full professor at the, at the School of Cryptology of the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences. Um, in addition, he's very active in the Chinese Association for Cryptologic Research, where he's a board member. Um, his research mostly focuses on automatic cryptanalysis, so he published multiple works on secure, uh, automatic security analysis of cryptographic building blocks. Um, his keynote talk will be about cryptanalysis of ARX ciphers. He will discuss some recent developments and will also identify some interesting problems for uh, open problems. So um, welcome, Siwei. So the floor is uh, yours. Okay. Uh, thanks, Bart, for the introduction. So I'm going to talk about cryptanalysis of ARX ciphers and uh, its recent developments and open some open questions. So here is the outline of my talk. First, what are ARX ciphers? So ARX ciphers generally we refer to uh, symmetric key primitives with building blocks such as addition, rotation, and uh, exclusive all. Uh, so to be more general, we may allow to include some other bitwise operations. Uh, here are two representative ARX ciphers. For example, the RZ proposed at Crypto 2020 and the SPIKE designed by the National Security Agen Agency of US. So for ARX ciphers, since the addition operation offers both diffusion and the confusion functionalities, so we do not need uh, some operations in uh, Xbox-based designs, such as we have no table lookups. So it provides high resilience against the timing-based set channel attacks. Uh, second, uh, it is very efficient in software and cause the operations are intrinsically supported by modern CPUs and the, the implementations of ARX ciphers are typically very small. In a recent sy systematic review for lightweight block ciphers, uh, it is stated that the state of the art ARX ciphers and the ARX lag designs are not only very fast, but also extremely small in terms of RAM footprint and uh, code size. So ARX ciphers can be found everywhere. For example, there are block ciphers, stream ciphers, hash functions, uh, cryptographic permutations, and uh, uh, max. And uh, this ARX ciphers are widely deployed in real world applications. For example, we have several ISO IEC standards like height, LEA, and chase key. Also, some of the ARX ciphers are used in the transport layer secure protocols and some other very practical protocols. Also, they are uh, widely implemented in some well-known cryptographic uh, software libraries, such as OpenSSL. Also, the Blake 2 uh, hash function, is uh, ARX hash function, is used in the Linux system. Uh, so next, uh, I will talk the development of the cryptanalysis of ARX ciphers. So for differential attack, it is developed uh, in the uh, 1980s. And for linear attack, it is uh, proposed in 1992. But only in, but only in 2003, we can have some method to compute the exact correlation of the linear correlation of addition. Uh, and uh, in 2001, we know how to compute 
the differential probabilities of modular additions efficiently. So generally speaking, uh, the development of the techniques for analyzing AR efforts are generally lagged behind for the cryptanalysis of S-box-based designs. Also, uh, when we talk about ARX efforts, we must uh, mention the sound difference technique developed uh, to break MD5. And here are some other techniques. Next, uh, I will introduce some specific techniques for analyzing ARX efforts. First, the differential truth analysis. Uh, the probability of, of, different, of the differential probability of the addition can be defined by this formula. So we just actually, we just need to count the number of pairs to satisfy this equation. So first I will, let, let us see how to, determine whether a uh, transition is actually possible. For input difference alpha, beta, and output difference gamma, if this is a possible transition, then we require the least significant bit fulfills uh, this equation. This is because uh, the least significant bit uh, it behave linearly in ARX efforts. Also for other bits, we require this condition. Uh, generally speaking, if the lower bits are the same, then the higher bits must satisfy this equation. So here is a very simple example. If the input difference is alpha and the beta and the output difference is gamma, then we can check whether this transition is possible by these conditions. So for the least significant bit, we can say that uh, one plus one equals zero. So the, this condition is fulfilled. Uh, but for this, but for this two bit sequence, uh, the lower b, the lower bits are are ones, so they are equal. So alpha i minus one equals beta i minus one, and and gamma i, I minus one. So we must check whether the higher bits satisfies this equation. Then we can we can check it. It is not. So this pattern is impossible. Uh, this, so the second uh, condition can be summarized uh, as a bitwise equation of this form. Uh, note that the, there are some symmetries in this equation. So beta can be replaced by alpha or gamma. With this equation, we can develop uh, some uh, automatic methods to analyze the ARX efforts. So to summarize the probability of the X of the addition uh, can be represented by this equation here. EQ is a bitwise function, function and it is dis described in this equation. So with this analysis, uh, we can develop some automatic methods for, analy for analyzing ARX efforts. For example, in the conditions, we only, we only involve uh, six bits. So we can model these tuples by mixed integer linear programming methods. And the objective function can be modeled by this equation. Then we can transform the search of differential characteristics of ARX efforts into an 
mixed integer programming model. Uh, next, uh, let's say uh, linear crypt analysis. There are some different techniques for linear crypt analysis. And the first uh, developed is the rational series technique. Uh, with this technique, the correlation of the linear approximation of additions can be computed uh, by a formula of, of this form. Here, L is a row vector and the C is a column vector. And the edges are two, time two, two times two uh, matrices defined as follows. So we only have four different, uh, four different uh, matrices. And here is an example. If the linear, if the linear masks are alpha, beta, and the gamma, alpha and the beta are input masks, and the gamma are output masks, then we can compute the correlation by this equation. So C and L are fixed uh, uh, row vectors and column vectors. And let's uh, start from the least significant bits. So the least significant bits are zero, one, and one. So it encodes, it encodes the binary, uh, the, the integer uh, three. So we must, uh, so this equation is A3. And similarly, we can determine all the matrices. Then we multiply them together and uh, the correlation is zero. Uh, another technique for linear curve analysis of additions is the finite automata methods. So here is an example of finite aut automata. So we have in this finite state machine, we have two states. This one marked with in initial. This is the start uh, state. And this is other states. So for finite automata, there are an input, there is an input string. So this state exe execute according the character, according to the characters of the string. So for this finite automata, if the first, if the input is two, then we will start from the init, the init state. We translate to the one state. So according to this table, we can model the transition of the finite automata. And the linear correlation can be computed by this equation. So it's similar. We just count the numbers of zero, the output when it's zeros and when it's ones. So the input string is ui. And we compute the integer it represents. So here is a we transit, we transform the binary numbers into integers. Then we can have a sequence of integers. And uh, here is a finite automata for addition for the addition operation. So if the input string, the input uh, character is seven, then we, we will start from E0, then we transit to E1. And uh, the next character is three, we will transit from E1 to E1. So this edge. And the next, the character is six. So here is six. So we still come back to E1. Follow this uh, style of analysis, we can model the entire transition. 
and uh, the correlation, the correlation can be computed by the number of times we visit the state E1. And if the automata ends up in the, in the state zero, then the correlation of the, of the probability will be zero. So similarly, the linear cryptanalysis of uh, additions can be modeled with uh, mixed integer linear programming. We actually model the transition table of the finite automata. For example, for this simple finite, finite automata, we can model these tuples into a set into a subset of high dimensional vectors. Then we can transform this, then we can describe this uh, convex hall by these linear inequalities. And also uh, the solution space, to derive the solution space, we need to set S0 equals zero and Sn equals one. Cause for other, uh, for other values, this will not be an, valid transition. Uh, next, uh, I will talk about uh, differential and uh, differential linear cryptanalysis. For ARX ciphers, it is very difficult to find uh, differential trials or linear trials with very high probability or correlation. We can see from this diagram, when the number of runs uh, get, get, gets higher, the probability will, the probability or correlation will get very small. So we can combine very short differential and uh, linear trials to form the differential linear attack. In differential linear cryptanalysis, we will uh, split the target cipher in two parts. And we will have some assumptions that uh, th these two parts are statistically independent. So if we can find, uh, if we can find a differential cover this part with input different small delta and uh, output difference delta with probability P. And uh, for the linear part, we can find a linear approximation with bias epsilon. Then if these two parts are statistically independent, the correlation of the differential and uh, of the differential linear approximation can be computed by the probability of the differential and the correlation of the linear approximation. But uh, generally, this formula is not good for ARX ciphers. Uh, since we need some type of methods to compute the correlation with only the input difference and the output linear mask, since there, there may be many transitions for the big delta. And the, the, the assumption of the independence are not valid in most, in most times for ARX ciphers. So next, uh, I will show how to compute the exact uh, uh, differential linear correlation of a single addition. First, uh, we need to introduce some notations. Uh, first, I, I would like to generalize the, the addition uh, operation. Here, we just uh, add another symbol, B. Uh, this uh, B indicates the initial, carry, the initial carry bit of the addition. For example, if we set B equals to if we set B equal to zero, then this is the ordinary addition. 
And here, n signifies the the word, the size of the words of the additions. For example, if here is n, then the addition is performed modulo two to the power n. Uh, next, uh, I will introduce the so-called uh, carry vector. So this vector, it, it describes every, every carry bits of the addition from the least significant bit to the most significant bit. So with this notation, we can split the operands of the operations into small segments. After, after this, we can derive some recursive relations of the addition. Then we can, using these recursive relations to analyze the addition. So this is a quite complicated symbol. Uh, so this is a symbol we developed for analyze the differential and the linear correlation of addition. And this is a very rich symbol capturing a lot of information. For example, for A, for the subscript A, it records the least significant carry bit of the addition of X and Y. And for, for the bit B, it records the least significant carry bit of the addition of the differential pairs. So X will plus alpha and Y will plus beta then for this here is the least significant uh, carry bit then for u and v here we split we split the vectors into small parts and this is this records the carry bits generated for for this blue parts for for the higher segments of the operands. So this is a quite complicated uh, symbol, but it all, almost uh, capture all the information we need to analyze an, an addition of differential pairs. So this symbol actually describes some subsets and this forms some useful partitions. For example, if we fix, if we fix the least significant carry bits A and B, then this forms a set, this forms a partition of this space. So with this notations, uh, we can say the differential linear uh, approxi differential linear approximation with input difference alpha beta and output uh, uh, linear mask lambda. The linear correlation can be computed using this equation. Then, if we denote this part with the function f, so this function have. Uh, this function has a size n. Then the differential linear correlation can be can be computed by this equation. So if we only use if we only imply this equation to compute linear correlation, it's actually a enumeration of the input space. So here we part we partition the input space with this notation.
then with some computations and uh, some analysis by this lemma. So this lemma actually gives a recursive relation between fk and fk minus one. So after this, we can derive a similar rational series for the computation of differential linear correlations. And it is given by this equation. And here M are four times four matrices. And the entries of this of these matrices are computed by this equation. So actually the entries are determined by the by the number of elements of the subsets of the partition. Here are some here are some concrete examples of the partition of the set. So if, if U, V, and A, B, U, V, and A, B equals 0, 0, 0, 0, then this subset equals 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0. So this table records all possible partitions of the set. So with this equation, we can compute the exact uh, differential linear correlation of a single addition. And here are some examples. Note that before this, this theory, all the computation are approximate numbers, but this one are exact. Oh, here is a table actually for more general differential linear criminalysis. Here we have a rotation offset. So it's rotational differential linear uh, approximation. So in this table, we can see some very strange numbers, but these numbers are exact. This, this means if you input all the possible input pair and uh, count the number of the output, so we can derive this, uh, these numbers, these figures. And here is the correlation for the di differential linear approximation of the modulo addition of two to the power 32. In this table, we can find some other strange numbers. For example, here the 65. Uh, however, with if we can only compute the differential linear, the correlation of the differential linear approximation of a single addition, we cannot compute, we cannot analyze a full cipher. So here we need the help of the so-called uh, Molavetsky technique. In Molavetsky's technique, the in, we input a set of uh, probability distributions. For example, here the uh, distribution is the probability of the, the pair, they are not the same. So why this equation is, have, have some relation with differential linear cryptanalysis. So we can write this equation into this form. Then we can say, is actually a differential linear approximation with output uh, linear masks being unit vectors. So with Molavetsky's technique and the input uh, probability distribution, we can compute this probability. And here is a uh, formula to summarize the idea. So it's quite complicated, so I won't go into the details.
So this equation is for uh, ordinary differential linear cryptanalysis. And this one, yes, this one is also for differential linear cryptanalysis, uh, but only for more specific for the addition operation. And here, H are a sequence. H are some four times matrix, four times four matrices. So when involved, the when when involve the analysis of additions, we always have some formulas like this: the multiplication of a sequence of matrices. But actually, we don't discover the intrinsic relations of this analysis. Here are some examples of ARX ciphers, and we will try to use the techniques mentioned previously to analyze them. Here is RZ, CPASH, and the SPAC. And here, this table records some uh, rotational differential linear distinguishers for round reduced RZ. For example, for the four round cipher, we can identify a deterministic distinguisher. Since all these distinguishers are of very, very high correlation, we can verify them in practice. So here is a correlation predicted by the theory. And here are the experimental correlations. We can see they are very close. Now here is the here are the results for CPASH. And this column records the input difference. And this column are the output linear masks. For this, we can see the correlation predicted by the, by the theory is much lower than the experimental correlation. So this means there are some assumptions in the analysis uh, do not hold. Since in the analysis, when we use Molavitsky's technique, we assume the bits, every single bits uh, are in the statistically independent. So this assumption may not valid. So this, this may be the reason for the, for they are not very close. And here, is the, here are the results for spike. For example, with this technique, we identify a differential linear distinguisher for 10 rounds spike. Note that in a very recent work in CTRSA 2023, uh, some researchers found uh, a 10 round uh, differential linear distinguisher of spec with correlation here. So this is a bit higher than this one. Also with this technique, we can explain some experimental distinguishers without theoretical interpretation. For example, in this paper, uh, He et al. Uh, stated that we are not concerned about why it shows a rotation property, pro property or why it reaches such a best level. So with this technique, we can theoretically analyze this di distinguisher. When the in input difference is one, the output difference is a unit vector. Then the predicted correlation with our method is two to the power minus 6.6. .6. And uh, the probability in the experiments is two to the power minus six. So they are very close. So we can interpret some theoretical distinguishers. Now here, I would like to give some brief introduction of differential rotational differential linear 
cryptanalysis. Actually, I have mentioned this before, but because the theory developed for rotational differential linear cryptanalysis and ordinary differential linear cryptanalysis are essentially the same. So in ordinary differentials, the differential pair is X and the X plus delta. But for rotational difference, we first rotate the input and then we plus the difference. So if we rotate this one, this input by an offset T and the plus this operands and the difference will be delta. This means we have a rotation difference of delta with rotation offset T. So we can generalize the differential uh, linear cryptanalysis by replace the ordinary differential part with a rotational differential. And here are the formulas for compute the correlation of the differential linear approximation. They are very similar to the ordinary differential linear cryptanalysis. But uh, this also relies on the assumption that these two parts are statistically independent. So we also need to develop some method to compute this correlation with only the input difference and the output linear mask. So here is a short summarization of Molavetsky's technique. So given the probability distribution of the input bits and with the assumption that these events are independent, we can derive the probability distribution of the next runs. So with this method, we can compute runs by runs to compute the final linear approximation. And sometimes this leads to very powerful disting distinguishers, such as the dis dis deterministic ones. So here is the equation for using Molavetsky's technique with the theory developed previously to compute the exact correlation of a single addition. So it's very complicated, but the idea are actually, ideas are actually are very similar. It's also a, a sequence multiplication of uh, matrices. So they must have some intrinsic relation with the rational series technique, but we don't know what it is. So for ARX ciphers, we also have some other techniques. For example, for the probability neutral bit technique, boomerang and sand difference technique, and for this techniques, I list some papers. And if the audience are interested in, in it, you can refer to these papers. Here are for boomerang cryptanalysis. And here is the sand uh, uh, difference technique for analyze some, a lot of hash functions. And this is the definition of the sand difference. They are very, uh, very different from the ordinary different difference defined by the exclusive wall. To search for sand difference, there are three types of methods. The first one is the handcraft method, and the second one is some heuristic search methods with with some type of guess and determine methods. And recently there are some automated search tools developed based on mixed integer programming, SAT and SMT. And for details, we refer the audience to 
these papers. Then I would like to mention the automatic tools for analyzing ARX efforts. The first one is some dedicated uh, uh, search software de developed uh, with general programming language. For example, the ARX toolkit. Also, we have some methods based on Matsi's death first search algorithm and uh, its variance. Also, we have some methods based on mixed integer linear programming and uh, the satisfiability theory. Uh, very recently, some researchers uh, try to try to automate the search of differential linear trials with the theory with the theory we developed previously with the mixed integer quadratic constraint programming. And here are some here are two papers recently uploaded to the ePrint. And this one is published at CTRSA. But uh, actually, these methods are not quite generic, and there are a lot of problems required to be solved to make the tools more efficient. Finally, I would like to uh, give some open questions. The first one is the differential and the linear cryptanalysis of multiple connected additions. So the simplest one is illustrated in this figure. We just have two additions and uh, we connect them together. And actually we, have, we already have some preliminary results for this type of combination. But uh, in real life, it can be much complicated. For example, the additions may connected via rotations, via ex exclusive wall. For example, in TEA, XTEA, and the cipher developed by Chinese researchers and, uh, some, and the Chan. Also, Cha Cha Blake, LEA and uh, Sosa, we all have such uh, connected uh, additions. So if we analyze with the previ previously theory, we need to split them into independent parts, then combine the analysis together. But in this process, we actually, into, we actually introduce the system into some not verify the assumptions. So it can be even more complicated. The additions can be connected via some S boxes. So how to analyze this type of parts as a, as a whole is a very interesting uh, open question. Also, in the literature of the cryptanalysis of ARX efforts, we have many uh, experimental distinguishers without theoretical interpretation. Here I list uh, some of the distinguishers. For example, here are four differential linear uh, distinguisher for Chisky. And th these are the experimental correlations. The experimental correlations are very high, but if we use existing theory to estimate the correlation, they are far, the value are far away from these experimental correlations. And here are some distinguishers for Cha Cha. These di distinguishers, all of them without a theoretical interpretation. 
And here are some experimental distinguishers of salsa. And here is, here is a, another concrete example. So in the theoretical prediction, the correlation is about uh, two to the power minus 42. So this distinguisher uh, is used in some attacks in salsa, but we cannot verify it experimentally. So some attacks of ARX ciphers are actually not quite reliable. And there are some, here is another example. The theoretical prediction is extremely small, but it's the actually experimental correlation is extremely high. There are some efforts to interpret uh, uh, this theoret uh, this experimental distinguishers. For example, in this work, uh, the distinguisher I listed uh, previously in, in the previous slides is actually, is actually, I think it's, this one is solved, but uh, when you look into the paper, the style of the analysis is not quite satisfiable because it's it gives you a feel of quite intentional to analyze a specific distinguisher. Every step is try to explain the, uh, the very high bias. So it's not a unified framework. Then we apply this framework back to a specific cipher. So I think this one is not quite satisfiable to solve these problems. So finally is a conclusion. So in ARX uh, cryptanalysis, we have made some significant progress. And also there are a lot of unsolved problems. Okay, thank you very much. Hello. Okay, thanks, uh, CUA, for the uh, interesting presentation. Um, let me first start with Beijing. Are there any questions in the room in Beijing? Oh, thanks, Swiss Talk. It's very uh, interesting. Um, I have a question. Um, have you uh, tried to, to compare uh, to com uh, compute the correlation for differential linear approximation with a uh, traditional uh, method? For example, we can express the, the uh, modular addition as uh, 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 as uh, X all, uh, for example, X yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, X all yeah. and uh, bit by bit. Uh, uh, what's the uh, Do you mean to use? To apply this type of formulas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we, we tried this, this type of analysis. Oh, actually, it's this one. So we tried to use this formula to compute the differential linear correlation. It's very inaccurate. I think it's not applicable generally for ARX efforts. So the, the previously, when we do not have method for compute the exact differential linear correlations, I think the only method is, uh, the only method is some uh, there are some papers, I, sorry, I, I forgot the papers, but uh, we also have the Molavetsky's technique. 
the Molavisky's technique only apply, uh, applicable to linear masks being unit vectors. So, Thank you. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Another question is: uh, Have you tried to supply to uh, uh, supply to modi uh, modular addition um, into several S box and to compute the correlation for differential linear approximation? <laughs> yeah, I I didn't try this approach, but uh, I think. Because in our analysis, we actually split into, into a recursive relation. So maybe essentially this type of analysis have some relations with the approach you proposed. But we don't split it as small S boxes because our, our recursive relation actually split it into bits, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh... According to the previous uh, results for the linear approximation, maybe there's some difference between these two methods, but maybe it's not very uh, big, I think. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there another question from Beijing? Hi. Hi. Thank you for the talk. Ah, I'm here. <laughs> Um, I just wondering in this, when you're showing the uh, relation between the theory and experimental uh, values. Sorry, uh, can you repeat? I, I, so uh, when you're showing like, I think in slide 35, 36, the relationship between the, the experimental um, estimators and the, the expected ones. Uh, yeah, that one. I was just wondering, are the, when you estimate them uh, through the experiment, the variances of the estimation are, are they low or are they like actually important here? Do you mean this one? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I don't quite get your question. <laughs> like you, uh, through the experiment, you estimate the theoretical value, right? Uh, it's you mean I how I find these distinguishers? Yeah. So when you find these estimators, uh, the variance during uh, the estimation. To, uh, yeah. To identify these distinguishers, I use uh, theoretical. I use theoretical analysis because we actually need to enumerate a lot of possible combinations. If we use experimental approach, then it it will not be possible. Because the time complexity is quite high. Okay. So we, we need in the experiment, we actually, because the block size is very small, we can, we can enumerate all possible input pairs. Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, another... thanks for your question. Okay. Just another question. When you're showing this uh, open problem about uh, the differential linear cryptanalysis of multiple connected additions, which of the techniques would you? think or advise are better for tackling this problem? Uh, actually, I not quite have some concrete idea, but uh, I think one very important breakthrough will, will be if we can avoid the assumption of bitwise independence, then we may can, maybe we can solve these problems. But I don't know, actually. I don't know how to solve it. Yeah, just uh, just yeah. like uh, uh, maybe a direction guidance that you might have. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, another question from Beijing, maybe. Uh, hello. Yeah, according to my understandings, uh, the go on your theory. I have. I have simple question okay okay it's just uh, same to the uh, last question there is a gap between the theoretical and actual value uh, and what's the reason depends on um um runs or whatever what's the possible reason for this just like the example in uh, spike uh, spike 
do you mean the reason of why the theoretical yes, analysis yes. not to match yes. the experimental? It uh, I see it maybe depends on runs the cipher you know, or something else. Uh, the reason for the gap uh, between theoretical value and the uh, uh, and the actual value in experiments. I, I just uh, want to. Uh, to I think the there are some between this. The reasons I think it, it comes from the assumptions we employed in the analysis. The the independence assumption just not hold in practice. Uh, the independence assumption. Um, yeah, because uh, in the uh, analysis, we assume every cause in, in the analysis, we actually rely on the Molavisky's technique. Yes, uh, if, so, it, if it depends on assumption, I have another question. Whether some con conclusions such as upbound of this gap uh, to boost our confidence to use this theoretical value in our works is whether there are whether some conclusions such, such as upbound of this gap, uh, which we can, need some method to upper bound this gap, which. Uh, <laughs> which which can boost our confidence in in attack to use this theoretical theoretical value in our attacks. Sorry, I, I don't know how to upper bound uh, any technique to uh, upper bound this. Maybe it's this gap. Maybe based on some assumption, we can derive this up. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, uh, maybe I, I just some... want to to know. Uh, in, whether it's possible to do it in this way. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. It's very interesting. Also. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, let me first see if there is a question in Koba. No question in Koba. Maybe there was one more question in Beijing. Or online. Hello. Oh, yeah, still. Ah, uh, yes. Who are you? Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Beijing now. You're online. Uh, no, no, no. I'm in Beijing now. Ah, okay. Just go ahead. Uh, uh hello. Uh, according to my understanding, the goal of your theory is to uh describe the transition of the um diff. Differential and uh, <laughs> your goal is to uh, describe the uh, differential and the linear transitions through the modular addition. And I I was wondering if it is possible to uh, apply this um, analysis method to uh, other types of attacks, uh, for example, um, Bomerang attacks. Uh yeah, I think the techniques maybe have some. I think these techniques are actually related. For example, the theory developed in this work can be used in the analysis of the boomerang. Yeah, boomerang I think attack. these two types because they are they are differential actually. Essentially, they are differential analysis. So, have you ever tried? this method to boomerang attacks? Yeah, actually, we have some, some results on the on compute to be more accurately compute the, the boomerang. But uh, uh, we just don't uh, publish. Yeah, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. Because, but the, the techniques are actually the same. Okay, yeah. I, okay. I, got, uh, I see, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Um, it's actually already past uh, 10 in Beijing, past 11 here. So um, I would like to stop here. I mean, we can continue the discussion offline if you want. So um, let's please join me in uh, thanking uh, Siwei.
Thank you very much.